Member for Saanich North End Islands. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Today I stand and respond to the ministerial statement uh, provided by the Minister of Indigenous Relations and Reconciliation uh, with the acknowledgement uh, of the pain and tribulations that are being um, felt uh, today and over the past few days from our relatives in uh, Seashell. Uh, Chief uh, Yalkumalt, Lenora Joe, uh, the leadership in the community acting on the information provided from the elders that survived the horrific experiences that happened in residential schools, specifically the St. Augustine Residential School operated by the Catholic Church in their community. Our thoughts and prayers are with the family as we have now stood numerous times. And just to acknowledge each time these findings are publicly stated, that it's not just the communities that are noting their findings, that feel the effect of these announcements, but it indeed reopens the wounds of residential and day school survivors that live today, their family members and those that may have suffered uh, as a result of being descendants of those people who unfortunately never made it home from school. As the minister said, we must do more, we must do better, we must do our part. I think it's important to acknowledge in that that residential and day schools, which we have stood and acknowledged several times now in this house, in this chamber, were only one part of a much broader policy of assimilation and cultural genocide that was experienced by Indigenous people here in British Columbia and right across our province. And while we mark these occasions by lowering flags and by wearing orange shirts, as a direct descendant of residential and day school survivors, I feel it's my obligation to also remind this institution that the steps that we need to take must be must be more than that. It's important to acknowledge that that policy, that broad set of policy that residential and day schools were a part of, were actually about separating mothers and children, undermining mothers and fathers, Indigenous mothers and fathers. And even as this institution changes and evolves in many wonderful ways, in fact, it's important that we're honest and we acknowledge the many awful ways that it's not evolving and changing quickly enough. I think of the ongoing uh, suffering that the Ministry of Children and Family Developments continues to cause our families. I think about the drug poisoning crisis and the report that we just had last week where 16.4 percent of the deaths of people that passed away as an unfortunate result of the drug poisoning crisis were Indigenous, our relatives, Indigenous people, when only 3.3 percent of the population are Indigenous people. That's 5.9 times the rate of the general population, Mr. Speaker. I think it's also important to acknowledge how the impact of that has had on um, our women, our matriarchs, our grandmothers, mothers, sisters, aunts, cousins. 36.5% of the women, Indigenous women that, uh, or sorry, 36.5% of the Indigenous people who passed away are women. That's 11.2 times the rate of women in the general population that have passed away to drug poisoning. There is a direct connection, and we must make that direct connection to the policies of this place as part of that broad policy. So when we stand in here and acknowledge the impact of residential schools, it is important that we are fully embracing and aware of the deep pain and suffering that it has not only caused the families of those who didn't come home from school, 
but those who did come home from school. And that there are people in our communities that continue to carry those stories and that pain and suffering to this very day. High school, see you.